good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's GW4 Water Security Alliance webinar. I am Chris Webb, a PhD student from the GW4 Fresh CDT at the University of Bristol and partnered with Bristol Water. The CDT addresses real life challenges in managing freshwater resources sustainably. My project is one example of this, where I investigate nutrient sources and fluxes driving lowland drinking water reservoir ecosystem response, which has links to both biodiversity and water security. Today, we are pleased to have Dr. Otto Chen, who is a postdoctoral research fellow in the Center for Water Systems at the University of Exeter. Otto is going to introduce us to a novel simulation framework for decision support towards industrial water symbiosis. If anyone has any questions during the talk, please put them into the chat or you may directly ask Otto at the end of the presentation. Now I will hand you over to Otto. Thank you, Chris. Um, let me share my screen. Yeah, today um, I'm talking about, going to talking about uh, uh, industrial symbiosis. and how we use a, a modeling approach to, uh, to work for the symbiosis. Uh, so, I'm currently a research fellow based in two research centers of University of Exeter. Uh, I'm currently involved in a research project, Automat which is funded by EU Horizon 2020. The project is about water smart, uh, water smart industrial symbiosis. So today I'm going to talk about the framework that is developed in this project. The framework is called FSWC, which is uh, framework of symbiotic water cycle, but it doesn't really uh, necessary to apply on water cycle symbiosis. It can apply on uh, most of the uh, industrial symbiosis context. And the, this figure shows the process of the modeling. You can see the framework consists of four modeling approaches, which, which, is, uh, which are MCDM, SD, ABM, and DEM. Uh, these four approaches are all uh, very common in operational research field. Um, so before uh, we talk about this framework, I think uh, probably not everyone know about this uh, SD or ABM or DEM model. So we will give a, a brief introduction what are these approach and why we need to use a hybrid approach for symbiosis. Uh, why hybrid modeling has advantage for symbiosis? Firstly, we need to know why simulation can help symbiosis. As symbiosis means some different industries or business work together like a supply chain for circular economy, which means your uh, uh, waste of a business can be, uh, can be used by another business and they work together. Uh, so all the stakeholders create a collective strategy to reuse something. So you can imagine this kind of collaboration would be rather different from project to project. There are lots of things are unknown to you or you can hardly find knowledge or experience from anywhere. 
And therefore, simulation can help symbiosis to figure out what scenario or what plan is the best plan toward all stakeholders. Back to the question about why hybrid approach be applied in this framework. Uh, as we know, symbiosis is usually a complex and dynamic system, or you can say it's a new business model, which actually involves all the features of the three modeling approach, which are relations and individual behavior and process. Um, what's the SD model approach? We can see um, you need to identify if you need uh, if you understand relations between something and you want to know what's the system will behavior so in this figure you can see a uh, relations between between and between these two between these two and how can we know the whole system behave if we only know the relations between the tools so this is SD and what's ABM? ABM is uh, the approach allow individual behavior. If you know individual, how individual agent behave, but you don't know how the system behave. So ABM model will help you to understand system behave from the individual behave you already know. Uh, for example, uh, when uh, there are 10 people in the reception of a club. They want to uh, inquire what's the activity in this club so that they can consider whether to join this club. And we want to know for that day, these 10 customers, how many customers will join in the, that day? That's the system behavior. But we don't know how many people will join, but we know how each uh, individual customer will behave. So uh, usually ABM model involves this kind of yes or no. Uh, like uh, a customer, one customer, he is interested. Of, of course, 10 customers are all interested. And one customer, he will go through this process at this assessment. And we can see, uh, for example, there might be a aerobic lesson for free as a promotion. But this promotion for all 10 members, uh, for 10 customers, not every one of them are interested. So we can see uh, the first customer maybe consider this promotion and finally they join, he joined. But the second customer probably not affected by this promotion and then he can think about differently and not join. So uh, ABM model uh, very usually involve this kind of yes or no, and they can behave differently. Um, what's the DEM model? It's the keyword is process. It involves process. So uh, it's, it's very common in many fields. You can see uh, manufacturing or, or like this uh, water process. Uh, to treatment or to, to make some production of juice or any kind of food, you need to go through process. And at every stop, you need some resource to treat it. If that's for manufacturing, like iPhone, uh, the first stop, you put CPU inside. The second stop, you put monitor. The third stop, you put battery, something like that. And at Every each stop, uh, there will be some resource to be used. For example, uh, labors. If you put three labors for the first stop, um, if labor are not enough, uh, there will be queuing before this CPU stop. So this process, this this modeling approach will let you know where will the queue will happen and how many resource you need at each stop. So it's, uh, you know each stop, how the process, uh, how the resource will be used, and then you can figure out the whole system, the whole process, how it performs. 
this is DEM. So uh, this is why we need uh, these three approach combined into a hybrid approach because the symbiosis always involved, you can imagine, process uh, like manufacturing and also individual different behavior and also uh, some relations like uh, if we collect water to be treated and reused, if we have more business to work together, we can collect more wastewater to be treated. The cost will reduce. So more water means the unit cost of the treatment will be reduced. That's the relation. So this kind of relation we use SD. Then uh, why I need MCDM to be engaged in this framework? Uh, a simula simulation, running a simulation will often give you some results and information. For instance, the simulation gives you three information as a result here. And when you run the another game, another, another time for the scenario two, it gives you another set of the result. But how can you compare which scenario is better? So you probably need to know uh, the weight of the C1, C2, C3 like this, so that you can use the weight and the, the mark yeah. and to get a final score. Then you can easily compare with these two scores to say scenario two is better. So we engage MCDM into this framework so that the modeling result will give you the uh, support for decision making. So let's back to explain the framework. What decision making support can this modeling provide? You can consider the modeling as a MCDM tool, which gives you ranking amongst the different scenarios at the end. The ranking is based on the simulation of the operation. The operation is the symbiosis, how the symbiosis goes. Uh, in order to do that, uh, particularly for symbiosis context, the framework must be participatory so that the simulation can well reflect the concerns and conditions of all stakeholders that might have rather different interests and priorities. Secondly, the framework applies hybrid modeling. Because single simulation approach cannot completely represent the dynamic and behavioral feature of the symbiosis, as we mentioned earlier. The third is the framework is initially designed regarding crossing water cycle, but it can actually be applied extensively to most of the symbiosis contexts. We will talk about it later. And although the modeling is basically using MCD and ranking, at the end, the framework can mainly divide it by two parts. The first part is the MCDM module. Uh, this is work for ranking. The second part is, is the later part. Uh, it's for simulating the basis operation, which is also the process of the symbiosis. It works with the MCM part, basically to provide performance information to mark the criteria. So, uh, which means uh, it will go as a loop. When it runs simulation for a year, then the end of the year or, or the end of one time, one period of time, it will go back to the MCDM module. Uh, the performance calculate or information calculate, uh, <laughs> the second part will feedback to the first part and as a ranking. So you probably notice from the same C1, C2, C3, this is a criteria and will be the same here, which means the 
performance will be uh, simulated in this part and feedback to the MCDM part like that. The final outcome of the modeling will give you the ranking of the alternatives or scenarios. You will also be able to see what happened in the symbiosis process during the 15 year simulation through the DEM module here. Uh, as we know, industrial symbiosis always features complexity and dynamics. Let's talk about what dynamic features the framework have. The first one is uh, it's dynamic in ways of criteria. We, uh, for example, uh, we usually have waiting for the criteria, and they are usually fixed. It's not changed, but here we consider a symbiosis might uh, have a long term, like 15 years, and uh, you and we design this. Um, it can be changed at some point, like the year six, when uh, the stakeholder think the priority of the the C1, C2, C3 can be changed, can be different. So the, the weight started to change. It makes sense because um, in such a long term, probably the first stage stakeholder thinks the productivity is most important. Uh, sorry, for, using this example, uh, stakeholders think the environmental performance is most important. But after uh, the operation of the symbiosis goes for years, then there will there might be a threshold. It's hard to uh, better than that threshold. So uh, the next stage, stakeholders want to focus on uh, maybe different criteria like uh, economic. So economic increase the weight, something like that. And we calculate each year by each year. That's the way model run each year by each year, uh, like as a, a circle, then calculate at the end of the 15 years as a result to compare which scenario is better. Um, uh, we, in this project, there are uh, 10 case studies to be explored. Um, I just use this one of the case studies uh, about greenhouse in Netherlands to help you understand how we can apply this framework to the symbiosis context. So you can see uh, the greenhouse in Netherlands, they usually use the water from uh, rainwater, it collect the rainwater from the roof. Then rainwater, uh, they uh, basically will, will, after storage, they'll send the rainwater to a uh, mixed tank and mix with some fertilizer, then be used to irrigation in this greenhouse. And, but there will be some water left uh, after be used by this plant will be left as a drain water. Then the drain water will be sent to a tank and do some uh, simple treatment and then reused to put into mixed tank again. So uh, not only they want to save the water to be reused more times, but also they can save the fertilizers. Uh, they don't need to add 100 amount of the fertilizer every time. So this is called internal recycle. And uh, a greenhouse, they don't want to make the internal recycle too complicated. So this, this kind of internal recycle, uh, usually the treated water wouldn't be 
uh, as clean as the rainwater, of course. And when it's getting uh, really dirty, that uh, for several times, after several times, they will dispose it. And uh, we are currently applying this framework on this case study to test the framework. The, uh, there is a coming national regulation to avoid wastewater pollution from greenhouse in Netherlands. So uh, previous slide is an example showing the stakeholder change the priority from environmental performance to economic performance at the, six, the year six, which is 2027. Because the 2027, uh, there will be a national regulation to be involved and uh, they request the greenhouse to be uh, zero emission, which means uh, no uh, polluted water can be discharged. So uh, the problem is not all of, uh, e even though a greenhouse with internal treatment, they, they will still need to discharge because the internal process is, is rather simple. And also the some some greenhouse they don't even have internal recycle. So they just discharge the the left of the, the drain water. So how how they can uh, treat their drain water before discharge to the sewer system is this uh, challenge before twenty twenty seven. And if they do it by himself, then it would be too expensive. So the idea is they will collect uh, as collect wastewater together and they build one wastewater treatment plant in one co uh, cooperative. So like a cooperative in this project, they have six, 60 farmers and 60 farmers, they all spend some money to build that treatment plant then collect all the uh, wastewater together and treat it. It would be cheaper for the cost of treatment. That's the idea. And then the treated water will be much clean and get close to rainwater, the water quality of the rainwater. So all of them can reuse this treated water So uh, why agent-based modeling in this framework is so important? Uh, I use this green and blue part as two different purposes for ABM. Uh, the blue part is for symbiosis implement and performance assessment. And the green part is for scenario forecasting, uh, which is to figure out how many uh, late participation will happen. Because the, uh, the, the participant, how many participants, if they allowed, uh, for example, these 60 farmers, if we allow them to participate, in the future, maybe at the beginning, only say 30 farmers, 30 business join this symbiosis. But in the future, there might be another 20 farmers want to join if they see this, this existing system work very well. And uh, the quality of water and the cost is very satisfactory. So they want to join in the future. And the symbiosis will be very happy if there are more people to join because the more water treat, treated and the less cost will, will be. So uh, in, in a symbiosis, uh, usually uh, the stakeholders will, they hope there will be more business to join in the future. 
then the symbiosis will be more sustainable. So even the scenarios uh, about how many members we have is dynamic. So we use this uh, ABM model to do the forecasting to do the simulation so that you will be able to see how many uh, members are growing rather than just uh, rely on your speculation saying after 10 years, maybe another 20 farmers will join. How, how can we know it's 20? So we need some simulation to tell us. As for the green ABM, which is for late participation simulation. Um, we propose a motivation-based willingness evaluation approach. So that's based on motivation uh, because the decision-making process takes motivation to be accumulated to a high level until the farmer would have enough willingness to join. Uh, the ABM model will evaluate the worthiness of each interest business at the end of the, each year. We identify six motivation KPIs for the greenhouse symbiosis, which are cost difference, these six KPIs. Uh, in, if, if a farmer uh, in each KPIs they have, they are satisfied with these KPIs, then they will have motivation high enough to join, that's the idea. And we can see here, there are some global and local, which means uh, global parameters will exist here and local parameters will exist here. And these two, they interact. Some parameters will interact to see the evaluation. For example, uh, a cost. If if the if they if they are more more uh, water be treated, the cost will decrease. So when the cost decrease, the difference between individual expectation of the cost and the symbiosis is, which means the, the, the system treatment and cost, the difference will become bigger, uh, which means he, he save enough money more, more than his expectation. If, if he save, he saves more money because of he joined his collective, collective treatment, then he, is, he feels satisfied, then the motivation of this KPI will, will high, will be good. So uh, it will use this framework to work with local and global parameters. And we also decide a, a approach to elicit elicit how individual farm farmer uh, are satisfied to join, how, how to elicit, elicit the willingness from the interest uh, basis. And yeah, this is another feature of the part participatory framework. Uh, that is the modeling involves not only early participants patterns of symbiosis, but also who only shows interest. We believe with the engagement of these two groups, the modeling can provide more information and benefit both groups. The early participants can get scenario forecasting, while the interest pieces would feel that their voice being heard to better shape the symbiosis. As such, they are more likely to join in the future. The process of the willingness evaluation is to use questionnaire to elicit the willingness possibility of each interested farmer. So we hope 
say we have 60 farmers in this cooperative. We hope all of them can give us a question error result so that we put all these results into the modeling. Then, uh, so each, each, the demand of all conditions of each farmers we know and will be under the simulation. With the willingness, willingness possibility of each farmer, the ABM model will know who want to join at each end of the year, like the previous one here. Say if 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 uh, farmer A, the willingness possibility is more than fifty percent, then go to join. If it's less than fifty percent, then back to the status of interest. So this is the the approach we we also use a kind of MCDM with waiting uh, to figure out what's the to interpret what's the possibility of the willingness that farmer has, and to see whether it's more than fifty percent to join or less than 52% that he's not joined. And this figure shows the structural layers of programming of which consist of uh, what components in different layers. This figure can help us understand how the framework built into a model. We can see uh, in parent layers, the models will show all the agents, how they interact with each other, uh, usually in a map. And also uh, at parent layer, there will be some control panels for different scenarios, different policies. And also uh, global parameters, something like uh, how many wastewater be treated in the whole system, in this whole symbiosis system, which is the global parameters. Um, how, uh, so what's local parameter is for each, like for each greenhouse, how many water be treated in each house, in each greenhouse is a local parameters. So this is a local and global parameters. And also a regional map, um, MCDM module is lo <laughs> are located here. And also um, some analysis paragraph about the system performance. And, and also SD or DEM approach can be applied in this layer. But in our greenhouse, because we don't uh, have any process in common. I mean, for the holistic system, uh, if they have some process in common, like they all pay taxes, if we want to model simulation, uh, something about tax, we, we can probably put a process here because paying taxes is the common process for different industries. But in, in, in our simulation, we don't use this. So this is not necessary. But we do have SD uh, here because we, we can say, for example, more, more water, more, more wasted water treated, and you will get less uh, cost for the unit treatment cost. So we apply SD here. And as for the child layer, you can see for uh, one individual farmer, there will be some treatment, uh, like internal treatment or process inside. So DEM is necessary. And SD is also necessary uh, because we, we, we have six KPI to see each farmers, whether they are interested or not. And these six KPIs, they have some relation with uh, with, with maybe with global parameters, something like, uh, because this area, they, in the summer, they have 
issues of uh, water shortage. So if uh, one of the KPI is the uh, availability of, the, of water, so if the KPI of water availability is better than uh, some farmers suffering water shortage will have more interest to join. So this kind of in, uh, relations we use in, in individual farmer agent. Um, this is the simulation. Uh, you can see uh, the main page of the model is basically accommodated in this parent layer. In this layer, map and statics pages are common so as to show how system behaves, which covers all the agents. So you will be able to see how all the agents interact with one another. You can see four greenhouses here. Um, in this version, I, I just put four uh, greenhouses. Of course, we have 60 uh, farmers in the cooperative. And I will put uh, to increase that in the late version. But I use four as an example. And at the beginning, only one send the wastewater to the, the wastewater treatment. And in the future, there will be more to join. And you can see there are three types of sets of scenarios. This, these two are the first type. And these three are the second type of scenarios. So three scenarios. And the third type is if whether you want to change uh, the weighting at some point. So the, these three types of scenarios, I can change and figure out which one is the better scenarios. And the, the left hand part here is uh, shows weights. Uh, we have five criteria. And this is the weights of the five criterias. And this is the marks of the five criterias. And these marks will be calculated through the running of the simulation year by year. And this one is the final score. Final score is the uh, a total summarize of, of all the years of these marks, multiple the weights. And the statics are to calculate. This is also in parent layer. So you, you need some uh, figures, uh, statics to, to show how the system perform uh, and to feedback to MCDM module annually. Some slide bars can be applied here. This is for uh, climate change. So uh, during the simulation, I can change anytime I want to see uh, if let he if let a uh, specific year uh, the climate change is very se very severe, then what will affect what's the influence to the system performance like that? So we have seen uh, the parent layer, and now we are going to see what's individual layer, the child layer. Uh, this is the greenhouse uh, number one. And you can see uh, there are DM model here, which means all the greenhouse will follow this process in common, but they can behave differently. Like they can uh, connect to the, the collective treat uh, treatment or not. So it will be uh, interact with ABM. Um, uh, as you can see, the irrigation water takes many three source. One are rain water, and second from recycled, recycled water, and the third is the tap water. Tap water is just for backup in water shortage situation. So they send to this mixed tank, then to irrigate. Uh, the left is drain water here, and drain water, part of the drain water will be internal uh, recycled back to mixed tank, but not all of the farmers will have this internal 
recycled process. So if they don't have, if if the greenhouse don't have the uh, <coughs> recycle, all the left drain which water will be sent to this church or to be sent to the uh, west uh, collective wastewater treatment. Then the treated water will back here to the mixed tank. So this is the process uh, to represent every greenhouse. And this SD uh, system dynamic model, uh, just as I said, uh, here are the six KPIs to see whether they will join or not. And so this system dynamics will change according to the, uh, the, the parent layer the performance in the parent layer, so they will be, they will change dynamically. And this is uh, wastewater treatment, the the collective one. So uh, all the four uh, greenhouse will send treat to uh, wastewater here and to be treated and send it back to them. And there are some uh, figures can show how it perform. So we, we have seen for individual one, they are DN involved and SD involved. Uh, but for the parent layer, there is no DN, but there is still SD model there. And also you can use some uh, sen sensitivity analysis uh, like this to see if we uh, control with different uh, like criteria we have uh, five criteria. If, if we change one of the criteria and to see uh, how it change will affect the, the system performance like that. And I have briefly introduced the framework. Now let's see where it can be applied. The framework can certainly be applied in our ultimate project, which is uh, nine case studies. Uh, involving these different industries. And as long as any demand contain these three key elements, which is process or in individual behavior or relations, as we mentioned before, as long as any demand contain these three, it can be applied this frame, for this framework. Uh, for example, you can imagine uh, whenever process, uh, individual agent and system dynamic exist, the framework can be applied like non-water related apply applications. For example, regional corruptive resource recycling, uh, uh, turning sludge into biogas, this kind of regional corruptive resource, or the collective, fun uh, oh, this is the second one, or uh, the first one is regional creative resource recycling, uh, like greenhouse wastewater. And the third one examples uh, for, for, for making electric cars, like uh, a platform, um, different industry can become a, a partner to in a, a different role in a platform like that, because they all involved uh, process and individual behavior and also relations. Above is a brief introduction of the, my framework. Thank you very much for listening. I'll be very happy to answer questions if you have. Thank you very much, Otto. That was a very interesting talk. If anyone has any questions, you're free to uh, Speed them out, ask Otter now, or uh, type them in the chat. Okay, Otto, I yep. do have a question while others are thinking. So uh, with the KPIs you mentioned, yep. is there one motivation that appears to be more important in the uh, gaining willingness or does that really just depend on the stakeholder 
involved? Uh, if you are talking about the um, these six KPIs, yes, yeah, uh, these six KPI are uh, we identified then uh, for the greenhouse case. So if the symbiosis for different combination of industries, then we will need to use survey to identify what's the most uh, representative KPIs for that project. Okay. So not necessarily these six KPIs, it might be different. Yeah, and in this project, because the uh, greenhouse, they uh, many of them they are suffering from uh, sh shortage of water in summer time in dry season. So, uh, like resource flexibility is one of the uh, one one is something they 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 really care. If they have more water uh, to be reused, then when during the summer. Uh, time they can use the reclaimed water and um, uh, of course the the first one like cost difference would be very uh, important because if they fight I I, I build a, a wastewater treatment for myself and I treat it by myself is the same cost as collective one then uh, the motivation will be much lower and so also for some social uh, aspect like peer recommendation or group advantage, if they do it collectively, they have more uh, advantage in negotiation with subcontractor or other uh, maintenance expertise. And if they have heard from neighbor greenhouse that uh, using this symbiosis is very good and they are very, they, they will be more uh, motivated to join. And about the operational, uh, also involves some contractual conditions. Even though the collective treatment uh, symbiosis is very ideal, but if the contract is not fair, then probably they, uh, they, they find it difficult to join. And also uh, legal compliance. Uh, we we mentioned uh, in 2027, there will be a national new regulation involved, which is zero emission. And if one farmer doesn't really care about that, then probably this uh, score in this uh, legal compliance, the motivation will be very low. So he will not join. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, I think yeah, I have gonna... some time. If if there is no question, I can show how a uh, simulation goes. Actually, yeah, that'll be quite interesting. So, if I run a simulation like this, in for uh, fifteen years. Can you see? Uh, at the moment, there are three three farmers join, and there's a the none of farmer hasn't joined, and this is year two because there are two samples. Um, this is the MCDM waiting, and this is the score of the year. So the final score is this multiply this to get the final score. And final score will increase because uh, the more years. So three samples means they, they are three years. Now it's running the end of the three years. If I go faster, like this, the other one is decide to join. 
then this is the end of the four years. Then we can see uh, the parent layer, there will be some analysis figures for the whole system, whole symbiosis performance. And this part of the SD model uh, is uh, to calculate if, if more water be treated, then the cost will be decreased. So this is dynamic for the cost. And we will be able to see here is allow new member to join. So we can test uh, if we start over again, we can cancel it. So for 15 years, there will only be one or the same farmers to join rather than new members. Then we can run for, uh, I will run very quick and we can run until maybe 10 years, the end of the 10 years. Then we started to allow new member to join. Then you will see the final score at the 15 years will be different. So in this case will be lower than if we let all the members join at any time. So I can also use this one. Also like this, I allow them to join. At the 12th year, now they started to join. And likewise, I can also allow them to leave if the contract allows. And for the second type of the scenarios, they are either this one or this one or this one, rather than like this, both of them can be applied. No, this, this type of scenarios is about how uh, the member will, will use the treated water. The default is uh, four of them, they send water to wastewater and they must take the treated water to be reused. But uh, there might be some farmers, they don't really suffering the water shortage. So they don't really want to use the treated water. So if I allow, they can donate the reclaimed water to others. Other two will share equally, and that's scenario two. But I can also choose the third one is allow donate reclaimed water to farmers who with higher deficit then the, the system performance will be different. Because if they, uh, if I, if, if I, all of them take the wastewater, uh, the, take the treated water from the wastewater treatment, but they don't want to use, they will just discharge it. And it's a waste, become waste. So uh, for the whole system, I can use these three uh, to see whether uh, what's the, the better scenarios? What's the better plan for this sim symbiosis? And also we can run, like uh, this is the weight and we can change it. Like I want to change the second criteria, the weight of the second criteria from 10 to 76 at the air of the year of the six, so now it's still the same, but at the year of the six, it will change to whatever I want. Then I will see uh, this is the final score after 15 years compared to if I don't change the, this weight, then how, how many score I will get to compare the scenarios. So basically uh, this is the, the, the model simulation. And if, if we look into each one, greenhouse, uh, you will see there when they are running and we can do, you can use the DEM model to, uh, to help our, to help the design, detail the design of the, the system in the future and also do the optimization work. Yeah.
I think I briefly, briefly show the simulation. I hope you can help you understand.